Christ is the Savior. It's not only a, the Messiah, or it's not only one more, but is the one that the Father chose to save the whole world. And we are persuaded about that. So why? Why we are thinking that this salvation is great? <clears throat> we have some problems right here with the technology. We are considering that our salvation is great because we are saved by a great Savior. And this Savior is Jesus Christ. It's not one more of the prophets. Uh, this Savior is not an angel. So, like we said, we are considering or we are believing the, the salvation is great because we are saved by a great Savior. And this Savior is Jesus Christ. He's no a prophet. He is greater than the prophet. The Bible says in the Old Testament, in the whole Old Testament, that the prophet prophesies of him. They were talking that was coming a future, and in the future, the Father shall provide a savior for the whole mankind. So Jesus is greater than the prophets. And the, the Bible said in the New Testament that the last of the prophets was John the Baptist or John the Baptizer. And John the Baptizer also talked about Jesus and he said he is greater than I. He is before I. And he also said, the top of his sandals are not worthy. This is working out. And he said, John the Baptizer said, the last prophet of the law, he said, the tongues of his sandals are not worthy of untie. He was recognizing that Jesus was greater than him. We don't have doubt about that. So that's the reason that we are saying this morning that the salvation is great because we are saved by a great savior. No, a great philosopher. Not only a great teacher. He was a great teacher. But he's more than that. All the time that you think about Jesus, and you think about other men, please, please don't compare Jesus with nobody. Because Jesus is greater than everybody. I remember that I was teaching a lesson some years ago, and I was teaching that Samson was physically the stronger man that the Bible mentioned. But Jesus is stronger than Samson. He was stronger. It's impossible to compare Jesus with somebody. It's not possible. So he is greater than the prophets. That's the reason that we are saying this morning that the salvation is great because we are saved by a great Savior greater than the prophets. Jesus was greater than the angels. What about the angels? People worship angels. At the same time that people worship idols, people also worship angels. That's a sin. And the Bible said that Jesus is greater than the angels. That's the reason our salvation is great. In the chapter 1 of Hebrews, the Father is talking about his son, and the Father is also talking about the angels, and he said about his song, your throne, O oh God, forever and ever. And do you remember what the Father says about the angel? Serve him. Serve 
this song. The angels are messengers of God. And the angels were created by God. And the angels were created to serve God, to serve the song, and of course to serve, to serve the Holy Spirit. When the song came to the earth, the angels were serving him. After the temptation, we see the angels serving him. He was hungry. They were serving him. In Gethsemane, the angels were comforting him, serving him. When he was born, the angels were announcing that to the shepherds. You've got now a savior. So they are servants of God. So the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, is greater even than the angels. He is superior than the prophet, superior to the angels. And we read right here in Luke chapter 2, verse 10, verse 11. But the angel said to them, to the shepherds, the angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid. No reason to be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy. It's no reason to be afraid if we are going to receive good news. Everybody lies or wants to receive good news. Everybody. It's no reason to be afraid. It's reason to be rejoiced, to be happy, to be glad. And that was the angel is saying to the shepherd, do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people, for everybody. These news are for all the people. Not only for righteous people, not only for good people, for everybody, for all people. That's what is the gospel. The gospel is called the good news of salvation. And the only one that brought or brings this good news of salvation is the great Savior, Jesus Christ. No other one. For today, the angel continues saying, for today, today. We don't know it was on December. I'm not here to be talking about the date. That's not my, my topic right now. That's not important. For today, in the city of David, Bethlehem was the city of David. He's mentioned the city, not the date. For today, in the city of David, David, sorry, there has been born for you, has been born for you, a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. He's the Savior. And the angel specify is the Savior and is the Messiah, the Christ. The word Christ means Messiah, the one that was being chosen by God. This is the Messiah. Has been born for you. He was born for us, brothers and sisters. Jesus came to this earth to save us. We must appreciate that. That's the reason that this salvation is great. Because we are saved by a great Savior. And Matthew, the Apostle Matthew continues saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bear a son and they call his name Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. For salvation is great because we are saved by the same God. The same guy, God, to the form, became flesh and descend to the earth to save the humanity. And the only way to save the humanity was to take in the form of a man. That's the only way. The only way to be in contact or communication 
with the mankind he tried before with prophets. And the people killed the prophet, stoned the prophet, murdered the prophet. But he said, this time the father said, I'm going to send my own son. My own song. They are going to respect my song. My song is the Savior. It's Emmanuel. It's going to be God among the people. And we, the people, saw God among them. That's what the Apostle John said. The lie was in the world, but the people loves darkness. Unfortunately and sadly, the people is still choosing darkness instead of the light. The Savior continues saving people, but people is rejecting the salvation. But we have a great Savior that, he con that continues saving us. That was Matthew said, that was Luke also said. Why this salvation is great? Because we are saved at a great cost. At a great cost. <clears throat> First Peter chapter 1 verse 18 through verse 20, the apostle Peter now is saying, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold. Oh, wait a minute. Silver and gold? Silver and gold. Everybody wants to have those metals, silver and gold. But Peter is saying, no, we are not redeemed with those things. Are perishable things. Those things are only for this war. Silver or gold from your feet or way of life inherited from your forefathers fetal way of life. This is like to say, this ground is fetal. It, does it doesn't produce nothing. It's impossible to plant something right here. It, that was exactly that Peter is saying, is comparing the life of this believer before, before to know Jesus was a fetal way or life inherited from your forefathers. That's exactly right. We have many problems now. Young people doing many wrong things, evil things. But let's see more than that. What about their parents? What are they doing? Are they doing something themselves to come to Jesus, to come to God? And then bring their child also to God? No. That has been the big problem all the time. Before the flood, that was the problem. Parents and child and children, the same thing. Practicing the same thing. And the Lord decided to send a flood. Sodom and, 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 and Gomorrah, the same thing. And that's... It's exactly the same thing that we're seeing. We need, the parents need to be a good example for their children. If they want to see, or, or they want to see their children practicing a good life. That's the only way. We need to be examples. The Christian, we need to be examples. We are the light of the world. We need to be examples for the unbelievers. If we want to see this building full with many people, we need to start being example and working hard. That's the only way. That's no other way. Let's continue faithful to the Lord, <clears throat> lining outside. And we're going to see many results. So that was Peter is saying. Inherited from your forefathers. But with, but with precious blood. As of a lamb. Unblemished and, and spotless. 
the blood of Christ. That's the way that we are being rescued. So we are being rescued at safe at great cost. That's the reason the salvation is great. Because we are saved at a great cost. For he was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in this last time for the sake of you. The same like, like uh, Matthew said, for you, Savior for you. Now Peter is saying, Jesus appeared in the last time for the sake of you. For the sake of us. That's the reason again I repeat the salvation is great because we are saved at a great cost. No one else was worthy to pay this price but Jesus Christ. No prophets, no angels, but the, son, the same God. The salvation is great because we are saved from a great penalty. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wishes to settle account with his slaves when he had to settle them, one who owned him 10,000 talents was brought to him. But since he did not have the means to repay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, along with his wife and children and all that he had, and repayment to be made. Right here, we see a big debt. 10,000 talents. This lay was owing to his Lord. An impossible debt to pay. 10,000 talents is like to say, it's like to say, if we want to mention a number, it's like to say 10 million dollars. A debt of ten millions dollars to mention some numbers, and we say that one ten millions dollars. We clearly agree. We are saying clearly a great deal of money. It was impossible for one slave to pay this debt. Impossible to pay. But we read right here that his Lord forgive his debt. That was exactly that the Father did with us. He forgave a great debt, a great penalty, impossible for us to pay. I could be the, the best man ever, but it's not possible to pay this debt in that way. But the Bible said that Jesus Christ descend, he came down, and he went to the cross and paid that death for us. That's the reason we are saying that the salvation is great, because we are saved from a great penalty impossible for us to pay. <clears throat> So the slave fell to the ground and prostrated himself before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will repay you everything. And the Lord of that slave felt compassion and released him and forgave him the debt. Matthew chapter 18, verse 23 through 27. His Lord forgave the debt. He was begging. Lord, forgive or forgive my debt, please. And his Lord felt compassion. That was exactly that the Father felt for us. Compassion. And he decided to send his son to save us. But now we are going to the question. 
why are we neglecting our salvation? The author of Hebrews is writing this letter because some of the members of the body of Christ were neglecting their salvation. Why are we neglecting our salvation? I got two points right here. Because we never see it as salvation. When we are neglecting our salvation, it's because we never see it as salvation. The all before that I said, we didn't consider it like that. Oh, number two. Because we see it merely as receiving something, not as being rescued from something. Oh, receiving and not rescued from something. That's the reason that sometimes we are neglecting our salvation. I'm not going to say this morning why or how we are neglecting our salvation. Everyone who knows, knows if we are neglecting our salvation. Everyone. The Bible said we must love this salvation because this salvation is great. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? There is a way to escape? No. There's no way. For if the war is spoken, is spoken through angels, prove a steadfast in every transgression and disobedience, receive a just reward. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. Word is spoken through angels. He's talking or making reference to the Mosaic law. You who received the law as ordained by angels and yet did not keep it. Stephen was preaching to the crown. And he is accusing them. You are the same as your forefathers, the same way. You don't want to obey the Lord God. You received the law. The love of Moses for salvation as ordained by angels. The angels were giving the law to the prophets, to Moses and to the rest of the prophets. And Stephen said to them, and yet did not keep it. Brothers and sisters, is this saying with us? Now we are receiving the salvation by the Son of God, the Father is giving the salvation to us, to the humanity, by his own song. If we don't keep it, how? How can we escape? Escape of what? Of the condemnation, of course. How? It's not possible. That's why Stephen was saying to the multitude, you didn't keep it. The law that was spoken through angel was a steadfast and a strict law. We see many examples in the Old Testament. Executions or disobedience was a steadfast and a strict law. How shall we escape? Angels, if we believe the war of the angels, we must stay there their words, seriously. What about the song? If we believe that the song is greater than the angels, we must start, take his word more seriously than the angels. Neglect is the same, like to have the opportunity to get something, but to ignore it. And we, we, we find the same word, neglect, right here in Matthew chapter 22, verse 5. It is the same Greek word that 
Jesus used right here in Matthew chapter 22, verse 5, that the same word that we are reading and studying this morning in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1 to verse 4. Neglect is the same word. Exactly the same Greek word. But they pay no attention the invitation to the marriage supper. Jesus was saying a parable about a marriage supper, invitation. And Jesus said, but they pay no attention to the invitation. In other words, they neglect, they ignore, they hurt the invitation. But they ignore it. But they pay no attention or neglect and went their own way. One to his own farm, another to his business. I'm so busy. I have no time. We hear sometimes many people saying this. I have no time. They hear the gospel. They hear about the salvation. And they say, I have no time. I'm so busy. I'm working too hard. We also work too hard. But we have time for the Lord. Sometimes we work more than eight hours, but we are with the desire to be gathered together to worship the Lord. Because we believe in this salvation. We believe in this Lord. They underestimate, they didn't care, they ignore the invitation. And the rest of the chapter said, no excuse. It's the same word, how shall we escape? No excuse. And the Father also confirmed the great salvation. That's another uh, evidence that we have, that this salvation is great, because the Father is confirming this great salvation by sending his own son, dear by the Lord, Jesus. He approved, this is my beloved son. Father is confirming the great salvation by his own son, by eyewitnesses. That's what Hebrew says, by eyewitnesses. He's talking about the apostle and not only the apostles. People can say, oh, is this the same song of God? That's the way he's confirming and he's saying that this salvation is true. Oh, the father said, I'm going to also include eyewitnesses. The same human beings are going to be testifying about this salvation. This salvation is great and it's true. Talking about the apostle, not only the friends of Jesus. Somebody can say, oh, they were the friend of Jesus. That's why they are talking good about Jesus, about God. But other believers in order to hear the word of God by those believers. Until this day, we are no eyewitnesses. We are no apostles. We are no prophets. We are believers. But we live with our own, with the old heart, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And he is providing and giving this salvation to everyone. And finally, it is not enough, my song, to believe in this great salvation through my song or through my eyewitnesses. Okay. And also, the Father said, I'm going to include the preaching of the gospel, but I'm going to be using signs. Wonders, miracles, and gifts of the Holy Spirit. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father is not going to give more evidence. That's enough. 
This is the same when the enemies of Jesus were, they saw him hanging on the cross. And they said, if you are the son of God, came down. He made many miracles. Many things. He gave a lot of evidence. People continue asking things now. Oh, I want to see this from God and I'm going to believe in him. Or I'm going to take this salvation. Or I'm going to be a believer of him. That's it. We got enough right here. We got enough with the evidence. That's enough. Enough is enough. In conclusions, brothers and sisters, today is the day of salvation. That's what the Bible says. Every day, every moment that we are hearing the word of God is the day of salvation, and the salvation is at hand. If you are a member of the, Christ, of the Church of Christ, we invite you, we encourage you this morning to continue faithful, to continue in this, in this salvation. If you are not a member of the Church of Christ, you are not a believer yet, we also invite you this morning to come to Jesus Christ, believing in him and being baptizing, and you shall be saved, confessing his holy name, and continue faithful to the point of death. Thank you so much for your attention, and God bless everyone.